are just connecting to Zoom now, so people will start to be able to come in. And I'm just going to set up this Facebook live stream so that we can get going. Um, so hello everybody, it's Amanda from PB here. Um, we're going to get going with this webinar in just a minute or two. I'm just setting up the Facebook live stream so that people can watch it over there too. So it just takes a minute or two to get going. And then we will get going with this, um, I was about to say Monday webinar, but it's Tuesday. Um, so yeah, it will just be a minute or two and then we will be good to go. Um, Cool. So I just need to paste this open. So yeah, for anybody who's joining, we are going to be going live in a minute or two. Just letting people come in, just getting this Facebook live stream sorted out. Um, and then we will be good to go. It's going to be a really good session. So, cool. Right. Go live. So that should be good to go in three, two, sorry guys, I'm on a bit of a slow desktop. Okay, so we are live on Facebook and we are live on Zoom. So hello everybody, welcome to today's PB webinar. My name's Amanda Pauley and I am Deputy Editor at Professional Beauty. Um, so today we're going to have a great webinar with Penny Etheridge and she's going to be talking about mastering the art of communication and how to communicate and manage the different personality types in your salon or your spa team. Um, she's going to be talking about four of the main personality types and how you should communicate with each of these individuals to get the best out of them, which will benefit your business. Um, so just before we get going, Penny, I don't know if you sort of want to introduce yourself a little bit and tell everybody a little bit about what you do. Yeah, sure. Um, hello, everybody. Uh, my first time on Professional Beauty. So uh, really looking forward to it. I'm really looking forward to sharing um, all the information that I have with you guys. Um, I have been in the hair and beauty industry for over 35 years. Uh, uh, as a salon owner for many years, I had four salons, uh, that, which were hair and beauty. And uh, for the last uh, 10 years, I have been a business salon consultant. So working with like-minded salon owners to help develop their businesses or help start their businesses. So uh, yes, eager, eager to share my information on communication because communication is key. <laughs> Well, what I'll do, everybody, is I'm going to let Penny take over. She's going to share her screen and deliver a great presentation. And then I will come back at the end and do an audience Q&A with her. However, Penny and I were talking before this. And if you do have any questions along the way, just post them in the comment box on Zoom or on the chat box on Facebook. And we will have segments in between where we can pose a few questions to Penny based on stuff she's talking about. So do post your questions in. But otherwise, I will see you guys at the end. So Penny, are you okay to share your screen? And then I will turn my camera and my mic off. Yes, um, I, I'm gonna just talk for a moment and oh, then I'll okay. share, is that okay? Yeah, yeah no, that's no worries. Just give me a shout if you have any problems getting the Technical share. Technical problems, yeah. I will do. I Thanks will so much, do. Penny, I'll see you in a bit. Bye. Thank you, Amanda. Yeah, strange, isn't it? Um, I love, um, I love talking about what I know about. Uh, get me involved with anything technical and I, and I start turning into a nervous wreck. So do bear with me if things are a bit clunky on the technical side. I, um, I promise you I, I do know what I'm talking about with everything else. And uh, Amanda uh, gave a great introduction on uh, the session that I'm going to be presenting today, which is the four main um, communication traits and why it's important that we can recognize those uh, communication traits and how we can utilize them within our own business so that we can run more effectively a motivated team and as we all know as salon owners and managers that i'm sure i'm speaking to out there our team is our most valuable asset so um 
firstly, before I start, and I have got some slides to uh, share with you, I, I would like this to be as interactive as possible. Uh, it's quite difficult to talk to a screen to know which pieces of information are being um, seen as more valuable than others. And I'm, I'm pretty good at picking up uh, when uh, a topic is of particular interest to uh, people. So please use that chat box to ask any questions throughout. I will be stopping to answer any questions. And of course, then there is a question and answer session at the end, um, and which time obviously you can save up questions for them. During the session today, although I'm talking about the four main communication styles, I will, will be drawing in other elements of um, uh, courses and workshops that I, I hold and present. And, and that's because everything is a, a great big jigsaw and there's nothing that's standalone when you run a business. So communication will sit into skill will, uh, appraisals, team meetings, and how to operate a successful team meeting. Will, they will all slip in. So um, I will be using other elements of my training sessions as well. Uh, if you need any more information after this session, please email me or Professional Beauty. Um, I'm, I'm here to help, basically. Um, so firstly, uh, I, do, I am going to be uh, rebranding my company um, soon. I'm in the process of doing that. And for any of you that are interested, if you wanted to um, contact Professional Beauty, I have six workshop books um, here. Um, that I will gladly post out um, because I won't be using them anymore. So for those people that would like a workshop book, I, um, if you contact Amanda or myself direct, I will post those out to you directly. I've only six left, but um, you know they're yours if you want them. Also, I will be talking about a skill will table, which is not on my slides. And should that be of interest to you, uh, please email me again and I can send you a template. They're very simple, so I really don't mind doing that either. So Amanda uh, said, uh, you know, to give, give a brief introduction, which I, I hope I kept brief. Um, don't want to spend too much time over myself, but I do think it's important that you know about my experience because it gives the reason why I feel I'm qualified to talk about communication to you and communication styles. So I wanted just to talk a little bit about my time as a salon owner, um, of which I was for 12 years. Uh, I started with one salon and I grew that, uh, that salon to four. And there were four big salons as well. I'm very, very retail successful. Three of my salons were mainly hair and one of my salons was sort of half and half. So I had four large beauty rooms and eight sections. So hair and beauty is something I know a lot about within business, yeah? And I think that's important that you know that often within when I'm talking to you guys, I know this is professional beauty, but I will cross across a lot with hair and beauty. Now, for those of you that are only beauty, just bear with me on that um, because it may be that you're thinking about getting an extra revenue stream, in which case you need to understand the hairdressers. Um, I will be as much as possible focusing on the beauty team, but I do feel we're conjoined in a lot of ways. Since selling my business in uh, 2003, I have uh, worked in the consultancy sector helping other salon owners in both hair and beauty, some that were conjoined, some that were just hair and some that were just beauty. And uh, what is common throughout all, all businesses is that our communication uh, can strike hammer blows or it can ignite fires. And uh, we don't often, we don't always rather, we don't always get it right. But for me, um, obviously the right communication and understanding communication has been key to getting the message across to help salon owners. Just as a point as well, for those of you that know about NLP, great. Um, I will be using some phrases and terms that are from the NLP practice. NLP is Neuro Linguistic Programming and it's basically the study of human behavior and communication. It was first born from two 
uh, people in America in 1970. So it's been going nearly 50 years now. It gets a good and a bad press. Uh, take from it what you will, but if, it's, if communication is something that you really want to work on and develop further, NLP is a jolly good starting point. And I would encourage anyone to delve a little bit deeper within the subject. I'm an NLP practitioner, and whilst I don't adopt all their practices, I certainly adopt um, a lot of them within my work. So if I mention NLP, that is Neuro Linguistic Programming, and I am a practitioner. So that's what I'm talking about on that. So next thing I'm gonna do is share my screen. And hopefully get you up. Right, brilliant. Okay, so the four main personality types here, as you can see, are open, reserved, direct, indirect. And I'll be talking in a lot more detail um, on those four traits throughout the session. It is worth remembering that if you were to be going to the psychiatry, um, industry, um, if you were to become a therapist, then there are recognized 16 communication traits. Although we might feel like psychiatrists sometimes and therapists, that is too much for us to take on board and learn along with everything else. So if you Google communication styles, for example, the rule of thumb is there are four main ones. Sometimes people say there's five or six, but generally there's four. And I like to simplify in everything because I, I think if it's not simple, quite simply, you're just gonna chuck it to one side and not use it because we're busy enough as it is, yeah? So I'm working on the four main recognized communication styles. Now, these are the words, the titles, if you like, that. Um, I've used. I am developing my communication course further and I actually do have a double meaning on all of those four circles but I'm going to start on that slide and talk you all through that. Yeah so if you've got uh, paper and pen might be to wise just to draw four circles. Put your open reserve direct and indirect in there but not too big because you'll need to write another term in there underneath. Uh, the whole point of this is, is because I'd like you to become fluent in the names of the different communication styles. So these aren't the only ones that are used. I'm going to use another one as well, so you can immediately recognise which one is which, if that makes sense. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start at the end, yeah? So moving down here, you can see I'm sharing my screen with my action plan. And I would like you, because I like to see a result from any training that I deliver, I would like you to write down these key questions here, but don't answer them, yeah? So what are the three key points that have you, you have learned from today? How will these make a positive difference for you? List three future situations where you will benefit and how. What are the three things you're going to commit to right now? And the point to this is, is that there has been a flood of educational webinars, fantastic, so many of them are fantastic. But my only concern is over the last four or five months that with this flood of information, sometimes we can start to become more educationally entertained than we are actually educating and putting into practice what we're learning. So this is my point about actually doing an action plan straight away from this session and you can even start writing points down on this whilst I'm talking over the next hour, yeah? I always say three key points that you have learned, okay? When you're really, really experienced and you've been owning your own business for years, it may be that you'll only get one from this session and that's okay as long as you get one, yeah? I'd be very worried if you didn't uh, at least get one. All right. So don't, it hasn't got to be three. It can be one, it can be two. And if it's more than three, that's fine as well. Yeah. How will these make a positive difference for you? 
everybody, everybody needs to know what value spending an hour with me is going to bring. Yeah. We always need to have a need and a value. Yeah. So put that down. That could just be one sentence. Three future situations where you will benefit and how. This is the start of your action plan. Okay. And this probably shouldn't be filled out till the very end of the session or afterwards. And the reason for that will become clear as we move forward. And what are the three things you're going to commit to right now? This is your action. This goes back to what I'm saying with all of these webinars that have been available to you guys, full of education, full of knowledge, but it would be a shame not to start using it all. Now we are opening and also obviously on the first, opening up our beauty businesses as well. All right, so I'm just going to ask if there's any questions on this now, Amanda, and then move forward onto my explaining the communication styles. Um, no questions at the moment, Penny. I think people are pretty happy for you to keep going. Great, let's go. Right, so. Okay, the big four. Okay, right. So here we have our four circles. We have our open, reserved, direct and indirect. By the side of open, I'd like you to put socializer. By the side of direct, I'd like you to put director. By the side of reserved, I'd like you to put relator. And by the side of indirect, I'd like you to put thinker. And the reason for this is because you'll be able to recognize um, two titles if you ever do any more research and it just makes life quicker rather than thinking, oh, which one, you know, what is a socializer? Are they open? You, you, you'll know it straight away. Okay. Within the hair and beauty industry, mostly, and I am generalizing, mostly you will have open socializer, reserved relator, or direct director communication types. Indirect people are very analytical. Um, they have a real attention to detail. They will question everything and have to understand everything before they do it. And they tend to work alone. It doesn't our industry doesn't really attract many indirect stroke thinker people. Um, mostly that type would be um, involved in kind of IT, accountancy, and very much sort of like uh, the attention to detail admin. Um, so therefore you might employ someone within your company who is an indirect or thinker person, but they would probably be you know, more on your um, admin team than anything else. So with open, reserved and direct, yeah, how, how can we recognize these people? Well, let's just talk about, firstly, our open, yeah? Now our open um, personality or our socializer, they, um, again, I'm generalizing, but they would tend to probably be more over onto the hair side, although therapists will very much can sit in this, um, in, in, in this uh, trait, in this style. They are open socializers, yeah? So they're, they're fun, they're chatterboxes, they, they're quite open with their own information about their own private lives, they like a gossip, um, but they're nice, friendly people. I mean, really friendly. On the flip side of that, um, sometimes they can become a little bit over-familiar. Uh, they be can become easily confused more than the other communication types. They can become easily distracted. And we'll talk about how to deal with open communicators within team meetings and appraisals um, moving on. So, they're the sort of people that love to talk, love to talk, um, but sometimes can forget the purpose of the conversation and not uh, carry out the requests that you have asked them to do. 
yeah so the main thing here on an open communicator or someone that's a socializer is you need to write everything down for them and even better if they write it down themselves now chances are because I've had lots of open communicators in my teams over the years chances are they write it down and I'll really be really honest with you now and it all get lost yeah, but the whole point of getting them to write something down is to, to make an affirmation of it. Okay, and this is going back to the NLP um, experience that I have. So with an open communicator, really lovely, chatty individual that's always in good spirits um, and loves to talk. Yeah, this person, key word here is they need to be controlled. And I put that in inverted commas because in no way do you want to kill their spirit. But what you do need is to keep them on topic all the time. Yeah, it's it's really important. Otherwise, they not only distract themselves, but they distract others, too. It's quite easy to identify an open communicator because they talk a lot and they're always bubbly and friendly. And we do have a lot of this type within um, our hair and beauty business. And in actual fact, a lot of salon owners are open communicators, which is great because they get on with everybody, but then you need to organize them. Yeah, and as I'm talking, perhaps some of you are saying to yourself, hmm, Perhaps I'm an open communicator. And what I'm saying is, do you know what? There's nothing wrong with that. But you need to organize yourselves better, probably. And you need to write everything down. And you need to set plans. You need to keep to them. And you need to keep your promises. And you need, you'll hear me say that a lot throughout this. Keep your promises. Yeah, remember your promises. All right? Now, I'm going to go over from an open communicator to a, a direct communicator or a director yeah now this is what can i say this is probably the it's in it's in red for a certain reason it's the most powerful powerful um trait it can be the most motivating and it can also be the most damaging yeah in a perfect team, in a perfect beauty and hair team, you would have one person, one individual who was a direct communicator, and then you would have uh, mostly reserved with you and a few open. Yeah, that would be in a perfect world. We don't live in a perfect world, and none of us, I shouldn't imagine, have perfect teams. Uh, uh, by the way, I'm, I'm just going to interject here. When you're looking for your perfect team, don't ever look for perfection. You just drive yourself mad. Um, I always work off the 80-20 principle, which is, um, a, you know, everything falls into 80-20. It's the Pareto principle. So if your team is 80% great, that's success. Yeah, don't bother looking for 100%. You just, you just drive yourself nuts. Um, so the direct communicator is somebody who's a leader all right and they like to control when this goes wrong is if you have somebody in your team who is a, who has become a direct communicator who wants to lead and control but only in the staff room they are the tricky ones because they are normally high skilled at the same time. And this is where this falls into our skill will table. With a direct communicator, sometimes there is, and, and you've become a direct communicator because you've had to, because you're having to lead a team, there can be somewhat of a power struggle. So how do we deal with these people? How can we deal with a direct communicator? Well, you need to be firm. You need to let them know who's in charge. And you need to look at ways of delegating responsibility. So giving them tasks where they work completely independently. And when I say completely independently, I truly mean that you need to trust. This person could be your biggest ally 
or your worst nightmare. Um, I'm not going to say that if you started to delegate and give independent tasks and independent responsibilities, it's all going to end really positively and they're going to be an asset to your company and perhaps become a director and everything. I'm not saying that, yeah? Some, sometimes it can still go all wrong, but at least by recognizing you have a direct communicator in your team and doing something positive about it, you're giving yourself the best chance of making somebody an asset to your company. But ultimately, ultimately, this is the one category where I would say if you've tried everything and it's failed, unfortunately, you do have to say goodbye to one another. Because what they will be doing otherwise is just completely undermining any of the decisions that you're going to be making. And they will be taking control from underneath you with that team in a negative way. Um, there's been a lot of uh, reports, information about staff and terrorists, et cetera, et cetera. This is the sort of person. However, let's remain on the positive. This person may be just yearning for more responsibility. You know, they, they want to be seen um, with respect. They want to be acknowledged as being in a higher position than other team members that's reflective of their skill and their knowledge and their experience. So let's let's remain positive with a direct communicator all right so with a direct communicator you have to find out their goals and aspirations yeah and then give them a clear career pathway and set them really quite robust targets to reach because these people like to be challenged unlike the other groups this group does and i would say within your team you're not likely to have many direct communicators you're probably only going to have one or two um, it's not a normal uh thing is to have lots of direct communicators within one team i, I certainly over all the years that i've been in business have not seen it yeah so you have to find out their goals, set them a clear uh, career pathway and set really robust targets in place for them to reach. Yeah, stretch them. Yeah, stretch them. They will be fine. It, they will find it motivating. Um, if they don't have any goals or aspirations, if they don't react positively to your targets that you are setting, then your answer lies there within, doesn't it? in the fact that they are just a controller out in the staff room and they just basically uh, want to undermine what you're doing. Um, we've all had them, yeah? I have had that type of person in there. And then it's the time to be strong and be firm and to say goodbye to that person. And they probably, um, over the years that I've uh, observed, they will probably go off and they will open their own business albeit they will be mobile um, they, they they will not once you've tried all your positive routes they are not the sort of people that will go off and join another salon because they're not uh, team members yes they don't want to do it again so that's probably where they will be going is off on their own yeah it's happened recently to me um, which is exactly what that person did they went they went off and opened up their own very small mobile business and that's fine that's absolutely fine I say Okay. Are we all right so far? Hope so. <laughs> right. Okay, so we've covered open and direct or socializer and director. Let's talk about briefly, briefly indirect, because there's not going to be many of uh, that um, communication style within your team. However, if you do happen to have someone who you've identified as being an indirect communicator, just make sure you've got all your facts in place because they will ask you lots and lots of questions. If I have to be really honest, and I've uh, led teams now for the best part of you know, 25 years, um, I find this category the most... Uh, challenging for me 
um, because they can come across as as procrastinating, uh, procrastinating rather. Um, they can see problems that I think oh, they don't really exist. It's because they want every stone unturned. They want to know every single detail. And once they've known everything, then they will make their decision. So they're not agile thinkers. And which is why I say that we don't really attract that type of communication style within our industry, because you have to be pretty agile in the hair and beauty industry, uh, never more so than now, and be pretty re reactive to situations. And they're not able to react quickly. They just can't. They've got to think everything through. They've got to analyze everything. There's a very good um, saying, which is uh, paralyze through analyze. You know, you, you can overthink situations. They haven't got that sort of get up and react ability. However, so what, what I'm saying is if you do have some indirect people in your team or one indirect person in your team within an appraisal, not within a team meeting, yeah, because it'll drive everybody else mad, but within an appraisal, please refine everything that you're talking about, targets, company goals, visions, career paths down to the minutest detail. The other communication styles will not need that amount of detail. So don't worry. Yeah, but just make sure you do it with any indirect communicators or thinkers as they are. They're going to need it because otherwise you'll get, you, do you know what? Why I find them a bit frustrated? Otherwise you'll get no response. Yeah, because they're too busy thinking about the situation. Yeah. So they're not lazy. They're not lazy people. Sometimes they, they are um, wrongly defined as being uh, lazy people that just sit about. They're not, they're just thinking, 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 thinking. And we're not really a thinking industry, uh, beauty and hair. We're very much feelings, emotions, do. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, just bear that one in mind. Don't label them, label them as being um, demotivated. They just need, until they get all the information, they won't do anything. Yeah. And finally, we come to the reserved um, area of communication styles. And this is the relator. Yeah. With beauty, you get a lot of reserved communicators within your team, which is a really good thing because the most loyal employees of all will be reserved or relator focused communi um, communicators. They won't offer up feedback willingly and you cannot force feedback from them. What they will do is they drink in the information that you give them and then very quietly, through observation, you will see that they're carrying out new tasks, new services, um, new protocols, just very quietly. Um, they've, they've taken it upon themselves to do it, yeah. Um, they value reliability, they want balance, and they want sincerity. And these people feel a lot. Now you might say, well, aren't a lot of hairdressers um, reserved? Yes, quite a few, but they're also very open because they work in a more active, busier environment, yeah? So they, are, they tend to stick across to the, the open category. And what I would say, and I haven't said this before, and perhaps I should have said it, is we don't get born as being a reserved communicator or an indirect communicator. That's not how it works. We can move around these circles um, with age, with life experience, with expectations, we can move around um, these communication styles a lot, really. Um, and I would say that even as salon owners, you possibly would be in that open and reserved and you've learned to be direct or you need to learn to be direct so that you can get your message across with clarity and make it clear and make it understandable. Sometimes people are direct, yeah, they, they, they open their, their own businesses, normally when they're quite young, and they, and they open their businesses because they have this drive, and they need to learn how to be a bit more reserved, yeah, because what reserved people 
really don't like is they don't like being pushed. All right, you can set them targets. I mean, they'll understand goals and targets are absolutely fine. But when you deliver about goals and targets, don't put any threat underneath that at all. And as much as possible, do never criticize these people in public. Um, their, their feelings are very easily hurt. Uh, they are hardworking people, but they, they, they are out of all of, all of the uh, communication styles. They're, they're the ones that um, will be emotionally led the most. But there's so much more that can come from a reserved person that they're worth spending that little bit of um, emotional input with because they will be loyal. They have uh, a really good uh, 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 attitude towards work. You know, they believe in working hard and honestly. Um, they just need to be treated with a little bit of kindness, compassion, set targets, be clear, but don't push. They're not normally people as well, it has to be said, that normally do well in promotions. Uh, so if you're going to do like a retail promotion, they're not poor people normally that want to push themselves and be, be the winner. That's normally open and direct people that uh, are um, more inclined to behave like that, um, which is why, you know, with direct people, if you can channel their energy, um, you know, correctly, uh, they are a huge asset to your business financially, as you know. So, so reserve people, oh, you know, if I were to, put them in uh, a, a category, another category that I teach, which is would be people pleaser. Yeah, they do. They tend to be people pleasers. Um, but they're loyal and they're great team players. Uh, within an appraisal situation, always ask them how they're feeling. Yeah. For God's sake, don't ask an open communicator how they're feeling because you'll get chapter and verse and you'll never get your appraisal done but do ask your reserved communicators how they're feeling before you go into any targets any figures and, and be patient with them yeah because they will reward you just looking at the time now so we are on halfway through our session are there any questions so far no, we're pretty good at the moment, Penny. Lots of people are saying what personality type they fall into and they're sharing that kind of information. But I think people are okay. really enjoying the, uh, the knowledge you're sharing at the moment. Brilliant, brilliant. Okay, so just for you to take a snapshot at, this is your identifiable types of communicator. So let me just scroll up here. So we have your open and your who are your socializers you have your reserved communicators who are your relators your indirect communicators who are your thinkers and then your direct communicators who are your directors okay so Let's move on now to share the screen with our table. All right, so it's interesting, Amanda, that you said, oh, everybody's saying what communication person they think they are. So this is a table and I use it a lot with a team. Privately, I use it a lot with a team so that I can gear my appraisals and my one-to-ones around the specific needs of each person's communication so that I can elicit the best response from them. This can also be used as a little bit of a fun team building exercise. So people can kind of guess if you like what each other are and can um, just have some fun with it. But also, I mean, with team building, I mean, it is fun yeah, and it should be fun, but also there will become a deeper understanding of each person so that people can be, become more tolerant sometimes of each other and understand why they are having the sort of conversations that they are having. So this, is, um, this isn't contained just to a working environment. This could become a very, very useful tool for our own personal lives as well. 
I did mention that um, throughout life we can change within uh, the boxes, you know, and, and very, very careful to not pigeonhole anyone and say, oh God, they're an open communicator, you know, nothing you can do with them, et cetera, et cetera. That's just rubbish. Um, nobody stays in the same communication style forever. And certainly as we grow through life with different life experiences, we will become or adopt different communication styles. What is so important is if that you're in any sort of position where you are holding team, mem team meetings, where you are the one that is delivering the appraisals or the one-to-ones, that you understand these communication levels and become very fluent in adopting different communication styles. And where it sometimes can go a bit haywire with the person that's um, hold, hold, hosting the appraisal or hosting the team meeting is they use their own communication style with a team and then they wonder why they're not getting a great response back. In other words, they haven't got the majority of the team on side. And that may well be because they are the, the, the direct communicator the director, the leader, um, and they haven't uh, thought about how the reserved communicator is receiving that information. So often if you're delivering a team meeting, well, anyway, let me say often, all the time, start to practice and rehearse, including all the communication styles within your delivery at team meetings and that way you're going to you know going to hit the most targets aren't you really so make sure that you are really factual make sure you do talk about feelings and make sure that you don't apply too much pressure within a uh, within a meeting make sure you stay in control and make sure you really know your topic. Yeah, and that way, if you do that, and we'll run over those um, key, key points, key elements to hosting a successful team meeting in a moment. But that way, if you do adopt all those communication styles, you're gonna, you're gonna hit most of your team, you're gonna motivate, you're gonna resonate with them, yeah? So, let's just think about here, moving on within our team meetings let's start thinking about our appraisals and i'd also like to just share with you in my book which i have to hand a skill wheel table okay So, along with open communicators, reserved communicators, indirect and direct, you also have a skill wheel table, which I find really, really useful for finding out the position somebody is in currently within my team or my company, all right? There are four tables. You might wanna jot this table down by the side. There's high skill, low will. High skill, high will, low skill, low will, low skill, high will. Okay. And again, this is a box similar to the one we're looking at now and people can move around those boxes. So for example, I'll give you an example of someone that could be in the high skill, high will box. If you start to give them new tasks and new responsibilities, they will move into the or move down to the low skill, high will because they're learning on the job, basically. All right. Especially with your direct communicators, they they could be very much living at the moment in your high skill, low will box. And this is what I'm saying about your direct communicators that you need to excite them, you need to give them robust targets and you need to give them independence within their job to lead others, yeah? So then you're dropping them down into low skill, high will. 
and they are naturally so such motivated people they've got so much energy that they would want to drive themselves back into high skill high will so this is when you get your peak performer your reserved communicators normally sit in the high skill high will however if you don't realize um not realize or how can i put this it may be sometimes you are a little bit too robust with them they could drop into high skill low will they're, they're very easy to um demotivate but they're with careful um conversation they're, they're easy to to push back into your high skill high will in your box by the way in your skill box obviously the goal is to get 80 percent of your team into your high skill high will box but that that box constantly fluctuates and how you move your box around is how you communicate targets goals and career paths to your team with an open communicator uh, they they flit about in every single box uh, they can be high skill low will yeah, which is why when they have completely um, distracted themselves from the task in hand, uh, they've got lots and lots of skill, but they're just talking all the time about anything uh, other than the job they've got to do. And um, I'm sure we know of uh, people like that. So you need to set them very, very clear career paths. And you need, with an open communicator, please make your goals quite quick. In other words, weekly, if not daily, because their attention span is 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 limited. Yeah, they they can't see the long the long ball. You have to absolutely focus them down almost daily. Yeah. However, an open communicator can be in a high skill, high will. Um, they can be in a low skill, high will, and very very occasionally they'd be in low skill, low will. But um, when I say they're an open communicator there and that's normally when they're moaning all the time so they're still talking but they're talking negatively all the time so if you've got an open communicator that's low skill low will i don't really need to tell you what to do with them really do i unless you put them on a weekly firm performance plan a direct communicator as i've said lives in high skill high will hopefully otherwise in a high skill, low wheel box. And then your indirect communicator generally um, lives in a high skill, high wheel box, but just doesn't show it because they don't communicate as vocally as the other three boxes. So that all comes down to making sure they've got all the information so that they can set their goals and they're happy with their goals. They need all the information. Um, within a team meeting to ensure that you cover all, all of your communication styles and therefore uh, elicit best response from your team, please plan your team meetings with an agenda and a timetable to keep it on track. If you've got a lot of open communicators in your team, the chances of it just blowing out and becoming one big conversation are very, very high. Please set a topic, one topic, every time you do a team meeting. Whether you completely keep to that one topic throughout your team meeting or not, it's really, really up to you, but please set one priority team topic. Keep to that topic. So with an open communicator and a direct communicator, they'll be pretty vocal, keep to topic and keep in control, yeah? So bring everything back to topic. So for example, say, or oh, thank you, Michelle, thank you for that feedback. Now let's just revert back to what we're doing with our customer care, yeah? So just keep drawing it back. And lastly, keep to your promises. Any promises that you, you know, um pledge to during a team meeting you must keep to because otherwise a reserved communicator you know your relator will lose trust it has to be said that with reserved communicators uh, the only reason why they will ever leave is when they feel pushed 
and they don't trust anymore that they're the most loyal people of all so uh, please don't lose them if you can if they're if they're of a high skill so keep to your promises and if you can't keep to your promises get your reserved communicators to one side and say i'm really sorry i cannot fulfill this expectation and give them the reason why because the other thing that they really relate well to is honesty okay i think i've drawn to a close so i think we're ready for any uh questions now if there are any Brilliant. Thank you so much, Penny. If you could just um, stop sharing your screen or maybe actually keep the four personality types up, that might be quite good. Yeah, just like that. Yeah. Yeah, that's brilliant. So, yeah, thank you so much for that, Penny. It was really, really interesting to learn about the different types. And I think um, lots of people who were watching it were realising that they fell into a, a couple of the bubbles, that they had some of the traits that um, crossed over, which was brilliant. Um, we've had a couple of questions and obviously if anybody else has any more post them in as we've got a little bit of time to get them in um, The first one we had was from Jackie on Facebook and she's asked whether these personality groups can be applied to clients When you're upselling retail and treatments. Yeah, very good. Very good question. Yes. Yes, absolutely Yes, they can um, and we also had a question from Patricia on Zoom and she has asked, how do you address a team meeting with lots of different personalities in front of you? Well, um, I mean, you're, th that's the situation that you're going to be facing all of the time. And the first thing is that you've recognised that you've got all these different personalities and these communication styles so that when you plan for your team meeting, make sure in your intro, yeah, welcome today, everyone to our team meeting. It's really great to see everyone. Make sure in your next four or five sentences that you cover off dealing with reserved, direct, indirect and open. So I would be suggesting something like, today we're gonna to be focusing on customer care i've allowed 20 minutes for for me to uh, talk to you about our new customer care program and after that there'll be a 10 minute question and answer that way you've been really direct telling the you know the direct communicators what you are doing you are clearly in control you've controlled your open communicators who are liable just to chip in all the time so you've said i'm going to speak for 20 minutes um, you have told your indirect communicator exactly what you're going to be talking on and that the fact that you're going to give more detail so you've kept them happy and with your reserved ones they're just listening they're listening you won't get much feedback from them don't expect it but they're taking it all in they are so that that's how I would be dealing with with that situation and I would open those team meetings the same every single time to be honest Brilliant. Thanks, Penny. I hope that's answered your question, Patricia. Um, we've had another question from Jodie on Zoom and she's asked, how do you avoid confrontation with the strong personality types? Well, the, the strong personality type would be a direct communicator or a director. Um, so they would fall into that. So uh, with them, you need to take back the reins. You need, you need to be in control. Of course, it can't... The, the, what you can't there's a couple of things you can't let happen you can't get emotional and you can't get personal and these people sometimes are so strong it's difficult it is it is difficult um if you're going to go into a conversation with a direct communicator write down what it is you want to discuss before you enter into the meeting and you have to remember that this isn't personal this is business don't say to that direct communicator this is nothing personal all right because they will pick up on that and they will turn it around to make it personal because that's their way of control remember that they're people that want to control they want to lead they you know what this is what i'm saying about they can either be the most fantastic or the worst Mm -hmm. So with a direct communicator, don't ever say this is nothing personal. Stick to facts. So if they have done, if you're going to have a difficult conversation with a direct communicator, someone who's very strong, I would say to them, right, this conversation I'm about to have is going to be a bit difficult 
However, it's a conversation that needs to be had and leave it at that, okay? So you're, you, they know you know it's gonna be difficult, all right? Um, if they see any weakness in you, then they're strike, yeah? The second thing that also needs to be considered with a direct communicator is they actually do need praise. Um, sometimes the direct communicator didn't start life as a direct communicator, but it's life experiences that have led them to end up there. Um, disappointment, um, maybe they feel a bit of a failure. There's, there's sometimes a deep insecurity that's driving that direct communication style. So I would say the next part, when you, after you've set the scene, you've managed the expectation of this is gonna be a difficult conversation. So you are a really valued member of the team. And this is what I'd like to see from you. Yeah, end of. Because what direct communication do not relate to is a lot of information a lot of flapping around and a lot of emotion they don't do small talk yeah so keep it to the, keep it to topic so you're a valued member of the team and this is what I'd like you to this is what I'd like to see you do I'd like to see you take over front of house responsibility how do you feel about that get a response yeah you're now started to excite ignite yeah, you've shown them the valued, but you've also shown them that you're holding the reins to your business. Yeah. Yeah, that's really solid advice. And um, Jodie said, thank you so much. That was great. Oh, um, good. <laughs> we had a, another question actually from um, Zoe on Facebook. And she's asked whether you think a person that fits into the reserve personality type, but with a little bit of open would be good at being self-employed. Um, oh, uh, I don't see why not. I don't see, I don't, um, yeah, that, that, that they would be fine. So I've not been asked that question before. It's interesting. <laughs> That's what I love about doing these sessions. It makes me, it provokes thought in me. I don't see why, um, a reserved person, reserved people can be as successful as they want to be just because they're, they tend to think about things and not give out feedback freely um actually they you know they, they've got every sort of opportunity to be as successful as anybody else uh so yes i, I think they definitely whether they want to be self-employed they're, they're such good team players often they they like working as part of a team so they could go self-employed but I, maybe if they went out completely on their own they might feel a little bit lonely um, mm. Although they then have such good rapport with their clients, but yeah, they, I, I think they'd be absolutely fine. They'd be very loyal to their clients, that's for sure. Yeah. Well, that's all the time we have for questions. I just wanted to let you know, Penny, that people have been loving this session. We just had a lovely message actually from Gillian on Facebook. He said, "Thank you very much. Really interesting. It's a pity I didn't know this when I had my salon." <laughs> um, <laughs> I think people have been really it's been really interesting like you said as well it's interesting to know that people don't necessarily fit flatly into one personality type but actually they can kind of cross over and move into different personality types mm -hmm. um, as they progress as a person so um, we have lots of people saying it's fantastic thank you so much it's been excellent and um, lots of people actually sent their emails in for your workbook Penny so I'm just going to send that over to you if that's okay the email yeah, I've only got six ah, so um, I'll let Penny I got like 10 so I'll let you pick um okay. <laughs> random maybe out of that. um but also quite a few people have asked whether you could send this document to them the one that you've shared today on the yes. um presentation so that'd be brilliant but yeah. yeah thank you everybody for watching and thank you so much Penny for your time and for delivering this it's been really really interesting um and we've got two more webinars this week we've got one tomorrow on how to be an award-winning business hair and beauty um, with some big names who have kind of really cemented their reputation in the industry. Um, and then, oh God, my mind's gone blank. I'm so sorry, I can't remember what Thursdays is, but if you go onto our social media pages or our website, there's loads of information about it there. And of course, if you came into this session late and you've missed the start, this webinar will be available indefinitely on PV's Facebook page. And we will also be putting it on our YouTube channel as of tomorrow morning. So you can always go back and um, watch it again or dig out a few notes if you wanted to. But thank you so much, Penny. It's been brilliant talking Pleasure. to you. Pleasure.
hope to see you at an event sort of in the future. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but otherwise, thank you everybody and I'll see you again soon. Bye everyone. Bye. Bye.